Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Now, how did I end up with this name? Well, I started off with QMMT, as you guys know. It was one of the first MMTers to YouTube it back in 2010, making fun of Peter Schiff. And I decided um, that I was going to prove that MMT uh, was, uh, in fact, correct and that it, you could make money off of it. And this is before Mike Norman, you know, rode my coattails. Eventually, um, I discovered on this journey that m and is bullshit. <laughs> that all government debt does not equal private sector assets to the 100%, but rather to the top 5%. And it's liabilities to the 95%, okay? So when you are sitting here uh, looking at this chart and you're seeing QE1, QE2, Operation Twist, the uh, reduction uh, of QE, ECB starts QE, QET, uh, repos, MMT everything, which is where we are now. This is end game MMT. Uh, that uh, the, the, where you're seeing the inflation is in asset prices. And that's what I've been saying. It's not going to make sense to the vast majority of people. Why? Because either they are incubator economists, right? Or they have six-point models like Logan Mokhtashami, who's a fucking disgrace and doesn't understand, oh, I back-tested it. You know, I back-tested it. It's been raised right since 1776. <laughs> really? Well, his six-point model never showed what was happening, okay? It was only after the stock market was down 35% that he figured out, oh, <laughs> we're going into a recession. Yeah, well, that's a little bit too late, isn't it, my friend? So you get you get the other people, the, the MMTers and the incubator. Everything works great inside an incubator. With all these assumptions that demand is always going to be there and everything is wonderful, it's beautiful inside the incubator. It's just the right temperature, right amount of oxygen, just enough light, right? Just enough touch. Everything is just wonderful inside of this incubator, right? Any problem we have, fuck it, print it. Print it, just print it. It's okay, we'll be fine. Right? It's all our assets. Government debt equals private sector assets. Yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit, my friend. That's not the way it works. It's, yes, it's assets to the top 5% and it's liabilities to the 95%. And this is why I told you. This is why I told you. No government can print value for a currency. It is not possible. Otherwise, we can all just sit home. We can sit home. We can sit on the couch. And relax and let the government print money, give it to us, and then they'll tax a portion of it back and they can have this hot tax and we'll, we'll value the currency and that's it. Huh? How about that? How about Vernon? Oh, you're trying to change MMT. You're trying to, you're trying to change MMT. I'm trying to change MMT? No. MMT is wrong. MMT is wrong, my friend. And I'm telling you it's wrong. I'm not trying to change it. It's just wrong. And it's not my fault it's wrong. You cannot print, borrow, and uh, import. You can't do it. And everybody now is like, oh, look, MMT is working. No, it's not. No, it's not because there's no economic growth. So print this, print that, stimulate this, you know, lower interest rates, that emergency rate cuts there. Every single day there's uh, another uh, a, a form of printing and QEing and repoing and deficits increases. And what do you think is going to happen to tax revenues? Well, they're going to collapse. They're going to collapse. But it's okay. Don't worry about it. We're just printing. And look at the dollar. The dollar's still up. Everything is fine. No. You see, uh, initially, as a world reserve currency, uh, we, we, we can enjoy this luxury because the rest of the world is going to run to the dollar. Yes, this is true. And eventually, though, as we keep printing every other day, uh, or every day, I should say, then at that point, there's going to be so many dollars, it's going to be meaningless. There's no point to it, because there's a law of diminishing returns. You can't say the same joke all day long and expect the people to keep laughing, because eventually they're going to stop laughing, they're going to become angry. And that's the same thing that's going to happen here. You can't, the more you print, the more you need to print. I keep saying that. The more you print, the more you need to print. And the more you need to print. And the more you need to print. Because you can't fix everything. You can't fix. You see, incubator economics and MMT is like the cross or the half moon of a hospital. It's great marketing. 
it's wonderful. It's, oh, yeah, it's the cross and the half moon that, you know, God is going to save you. No, it's not God. It's science that's going to save you. It's the natural, physical world uh, and, and the, the discoveries of new medicines that are going to save you, not prayer. And it's the same thing with economics. It's not, it's not the money printing that causes uh, inflation, I'm sorry, uh, that causes recessions uh, and recoveries. The economy is, is, is an economy. It, it behaves the way it behaves. And there's nothing anybody can do. Not all the printing in the world can change that. There's a belief out there that, that, that it is, that it can. It can, be, it can be done. And that's why I kept asking, what the fuck are you buying at all-time highs at max employment and everything is going great and you're only getting 2.5% uh, GDP growth? What are you buying? What value are you buying? Oh, you, you don't understand. I don't understand. No, you don't understand, my friend. Because that's what I was saying the whole entire time since September. Man, it's a bit like a death mint. Right? Write it all in here. What are you buying here? No, no, there's not enough death rates. It's okay. Everything is fine. No, I'm not worried about it. You're not worried about it? How about now? Are you worried about it now, my friend? Huh? Are you worried about it now? You should be wor worried about it. That's why I was telling you, did I know coronavirus was coming? I didn't have a fucking clue. Right? Back in September. I did have a clue in January, and that's when I said it. In February, I'm like, what the fuck is the market doing? Why is it going up? Don't they understand what's happening? I don't know. There's not enough death. It, it doesn't bother me. Buy, buy, buy. Because the other guy's buying. And, you know, you just keep buying. Really? Really? How about now, my friend? You see... You can sit here and say, oh, you're not an economist. <laughs> we used to make fun of economists. No, no, no. I am the best kind of economist there is. Because I'm the kind of economist that's going to tell you what's going on. Right? I'm not going to write a paper about it. I'm not going to sit here and give you theories and models. Right? Logan Mokhtashamdi, my six-point model. Is, you know, it's back-tested in 1960 and it works every time. <laughs> the Fed called me up and they told me, what kind of model are you using? These people are idiots. These people are scam artists. That they, they always they have some secret formula. What's the secret formula for supply and demand? There is none, right? It's mathematics. What happened to oil yesterday? Negative forty dollars. Oil can't go negative. Well, it did. Well, that's not possible. It is possible, and it happened. Okay. What's oil today? Let's take a look at oil. Where, where is oil today? Twelve dollars. <laughs> well, it was just a May contract, right? What about the June contract? $12? What do you think it's going to be by the time uh, the end of the month is? You see, lurkers, uh, people that uh, they don't understand what I do, they, they can sit here and talk and talk and talk and say, oh, you're lucky. And like, Why am I lucky so, so often? Do you ever think about that? Why am I so lucky? It's because I know what I'm talking about and you don't. And that pisses you the fuck off. Right? Right? Oh, why don't you just stick to flying airplanes, Nick? Just stick to flying airplanes. Yeah, I, I don't know how to build an airplane. I have no clue. I know how to fly the shit out of one. Right? That's the difference. And again, I might not have a PhD economy, but I know how economics works, and I, I'm telling you that shit is not right in September. Trillion dollar deficits, tax cuts, repos, Q, not QE. Mid-cycle adjustments, everything is great. Look at retail sales. Look at more jobs and people looking for jobs. Everything is great. What value are you buying, my friend, up here? What value? Oh, is there enough deaths? Yeah. See, that's why you're a clown, and I'm the one that gets things right. That's the difference. You see, that's the difference. Oh, you want to be nibbling on the way down. You want to be nibbling. You want to uh, pick and choose which ones you want to buy. Oh, great insight. Great insight. Right? Stimulus for this, stimulus for that, stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. Oh, don't call it a stimulus. It's a bailout. Well, it's not a bailout. It's crisis management. Call it whatever you want. And I do. I get, I get it that, you know, politics is fucked up. Uh, it's very difficult to, to make decisions. Uh, I, I get it. Uh, I understand that you have to do some printing. Absolutely, you have to. Everybody's on lockdown, right? People need to survive. We don't want them to starve to death and start uh, burglaries and killing each other in the streets. I get it, right? 
I get all that stuff. I'm not stupid. But my job as an investor is not to sit here and worry about these things. Uh, my job as a, uh, uh, someone who understands economics and investing, right? my job is not to worry about these. My job is to tell you what's going to happen. That's my job. Right? What is the stock market going to do? You can print $6 trillion, 16% of all the debt ever accumulated in history, pump it, QE the shit out of everything, $2 trillion on top of that, do whatever the hell you want. You won't get economic growth. And that's why I keep telling you, no government can print value for a currency. Government debt equals private sector savings for the top 5% and liabilities for the 95%. I've been telling you this, but it doesn't make sense to you guys. Why? Because you guys are sitting here reading stupid books, coming up with stupid theories, listening to Mosler, listening to all these idiots that are going to sit here and they, they're going to tell you about incubator economics and their theories and all this bull crap. And in the end of the day, you know what's going to happen? Real macroeconomics is going to hit you upside your head. Because real macro, coronaviruses exists, lockdowns exist. Right? That's the real world. And you can't, if, if, and that's why I kept bitching. If you guys are going to print now, now, when things are good, 160 million people working more than ever before, you're going to do tax cuts, you're going to do repos, you're going to lower interest rates, you're going to do all these things now when things are good. What are you going to do when things are bad? <laughs> print more? It's going to be, it's, it's going to be useless. There's no, there's no point to it. Right? I'm telling you. Uh, incubators and MMT and all this bullshit, it's like the cross on the hospital, half moon, whatever your religion is. That's what it is, just fantasies, talking points, uh, people arguing all over social media, clueless as to what reality is, what the real world of economics is like. In the perfect world inside of an incubator, yeah, that sounds great, but that's not how the world is. It's not the way the world runs, that's not the way the economy runs, and you know, Every single time we've been in a recession, they print money, and then they tell you, oh, look, see, it's the printing that saved us from the recession. <laughs> oh, am I smart economist or what? No, you're an idiot, because the economy did not recover because of your printing. Did it help? Absolutely. It's a great economic tool to, to stop fear, right, to, to do some, some stimulus, some stuff. But it, it doesn't. That's not why an economy recovers. An economy recovers because it recovers on its own, from whatever level that drops down to. So you can cover it up artificially with printing money and and, and nominally, um, you know, changing numbers. But that's not why an economy recovers, and it's not why it goes into a recession. There's more real-world macro things in play <laughs> that you cannot control. But yet they're going to lead you to believe that it's the Fed, it's Treasury, it's America, it's the banking system, it's Goldman Sachs, it's whatever that makes it all run. And that's just fantasies. That's the cart ahead of the, the horse. You're, you're living in fantasy world. Okay? And I, I do. I get it that you guys are not going to understand what I'm saying. Uh, because my, what I do, I'm a purist. I believe in the real supply and demand. There's too much supply of oil. Oil is going to go down, <laughs> of course, right? It's going to go down. Too much supply, not enough demand. Makes sense. It's not as complicated and difficult. Oh, it's an MMT description. It's a description. It's not a description. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Description is garbage. There's a profit mechanism. No profit can exist without household savings. It's not possible. So if the government is the one that's keep giving you money, keep giving you money to the 95% and funding everything, and you, you, you have the government that went from 5% of GDP to 25% of GDP to 50% of GDP to 100% of GDP, that's not an economy. That's a collapse. And that's what you're witnessing right now. That uh, they're just going to keep printing and printing and stimulating every single day. And the market is going to go down. It, it will. Uh, the only way they, they're going to make the market go up is if we start hyperinflating like Venezuela. Stock market is up 4.5,000%. <laughs> the currency is worth nothing, but the stock market is up. Same thing with Pakistan. Look at their 
the Pakistani uh, rupee or whatever they call it, right? Stock market is up, but the value of the currency has collapsed. Same thing in Turkey. In, in the lira, right, the stock market is up. But in the ETF, where the dollar is, the Turkey is down, right? Because you got to look at the whole picture. You got to look at the at the uh, the value of the currency plus the investment. So if you want the stock market to go up, <laughs> what you're saying is you want the dollar to go down uh, and create monetary inflation. And again, I'm going to say this that no matter you know uh, how high you go in something. You're always a hundred percent from zero, always. It's just the it's just a fact of life. So you you go all the way back here into let's say 90s, whatever it is, uh, 93, okay? And it says, oh my God, look, it's up a hundred percent. How have you made a hundred percent of my money? Oh look, I'm up 200 uh, percent of my money. Oh look, I'm up 300. Oh look, I'm up 400, 500. I'm up 700 percent of my money. <laughs> yes. But in the real world, if you understand how percentages works, you're always 100% from zero. Always 100% from zero. Never forget that. It's not the same thing. Uh, and uh, when you are sitting here saying silly things, oh, look at this tech market. You know, you know how, mon how many hundreds of percent there are in a 50% decline from zero? There's a lot of hundreds in there, my friend. A lot of hundred percents up down 50 percent and that's that's where it looks like we're heading and well i know you know buy the dip nibble on the way down yeah you think this artificial pumping of the uh, stock market is going to hold mm? you think you're going to have no economy and earnings per shares are going to grow mm? i don't think so you think you're going to have a, a, a no place to store oil and oil is going to go up with no demand, you're living in fantasy land. So, anyway, patreon.com slash real macro. If you guys want the real deal, uh, no gimmicks, no, you know, I'm going to tell you how it is. You like it, you don't like it, I, I couldn't care less. You know, you want to lurk, come and lurk. Patreon.com slash real, uh, real macro. It's real macro because it's real macro. That's what I do. I'm a purist. I believe in, in real supply and demand. I believe in real world uh, economics where coronaviruses do exist right and we all go into lockdown and you can print as much money as you want it won't make a damn bit of difference because no government can print value for a currency i've been saying that for years and you want to write your little books and you want to try to save mmt and uh, you know kind of finesse it and uh, caveat this and caveat that and well you don't understand the meaning of this and that and you're wasting your time I, that's political bullshit. Imagine if we had Bernie. Could you imagine if we had four or five uh, dollar, uh, four, four or five trillion dollar deficits now? Well, what, what, what would happen now? <laughs> if you had four or five trillion dollars in deficits now, and you had another six trillion on top of that, you just exploded everything. Well, yeah. We would be so far off, worse off than uh, than what we are now, and, and we're gonna get there. Don't worry about it. We're going to get there. Remember, it's a savings bubble, right? Government here, the private sector here, and savers top 1% is here. And this is the event horizon. Money gets pumped in. This government gets pumped in. It goes around the functional economy, ends up in savings, and then stock prices go higher. And this keeps going on and on and on, and they will never stop. You in the middle... You in the middle get screwed, and savers become richer and richer. That's MMT. And you can see that on the chart here with all the QEs, all the money printing, all the lower interest rates. And uh, you know, this is reality. I told you. I told you. Don't listen to these uh, clowns. Incubator MMT bullshit economics is, doesn't work. All right. Patreon.com slash real macro. Come on down. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.